British military helicopter takes off from its base in Wales. Its mission this summer day, to train a new navigator and give four teenage air cadets a trip over the Welsh countryside. Air cadet Sarah Coker is looking forward to her first helicopter flight. I have a little bit of fear because I've never been on it before. Um, and a little bit of excitement as well, quite a lot of excitement too. Because, you know, it was something new. The flight covers some of the most pristine scenery in northern Wales. As the helicopter soars overhead, tourist David Souten is on the ground below, recording his family's vacation. We're traveling along and... I saw this helicopter um, coming, coming over the mountains. Suddenly, he sees the slow-moving helicopter flying erratically. We've been flying for about half an hour. Everything seemed to be okay, and then we heard this banging noise in the tail of the aircraft. The helicopter begins to spin out of control, plummeting earthward. And then he started spiraling down just on, you know, practice maneuver or something. Inside, Sarah realizes something is going terribly wrong. I looked out of the window and I could see the light coming up towards me and I thought, you know, I'm in a bit of a dangerous situation. The seven people aboard barely have time to brace for the impact. As David and his family watch in disbelief, it slams into icy Lake Padarn. When you're hitting the surface of water from any amount of height, the surface becomes like concrete. I broke my back, and then um, it sunk to the bottom of the lake. As this Royal Air Force training video shows, the pilot and the two crew members are taught how to escape from a sinking helicopter, and they do. But the four inexperienced air cadets sink 70 feet to the bottom inside the copter. I managed to undo my seatbelt and um, I pulled myself to the door and uh, just remember floating to the top of the lake. Within seconds of surfacing, along with the surviving crew members, Sarah is pulled into a passing boat. Divers later find her three air cadet colleagues strapped into their seats in the wreckage. We thought at the time that they'd all got out safely. We didn't realize there were cadets on board. The downed helicopter is a Westland Wessex, a workhorse of the British Armed Forces since the 1950s. Larry Cartman is an internationally known flight safety instructor who is familiar with the Wessex. It's a uh, British military helicopter used in their Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a very popular, very reliable aircraft. Famous for its safety record, the Wessex is so dependable that even Britain's Queen Mother has toured in one. Why then does the helicopter mysteriously plunge into the lake without a hint of warning? Contrary to popular belief, a helicopter with an engine malfunction does not have to drop like a stone. The overhead rotor, which provides lift and forward momentum, turns counterclockwise. This creates torque, a force which makes the body of the helicopter want to turn clockwise. The function of a tail rotor is to counter that torque. Without a tail rotor, a helicopter spins helplessly out of control, just as Sarah Coker's helicopter did. But there are ways to regain control if a helicopter loses its tail rotor. Given enough altitude and speed, a disabled helicopter can coast to the ground through a technique called auto-rotation, as Cartman demonstrates on a helicopter flight simulator. After achieving sufficient altitude and airspeed, the rear rotor is cut off. The helicopter immediately starts to spin. To stop the spin, Cartman disconnects the engine. And now I'm in a full auto rotation. The upward flow of air is driving the rotor system. I'm going to come down and I'm going to trade off this airspeed and allow that rotor inertia to build, keep that rotor turning at full RPM. Then I'm going to use my collective pitch here to cushion the landing onto the ground and try to land as softly as possible with no power. An investigation of the Lake Padarn crash reveals a problem that will forever change the makeup of the British helicopter fleet. The origin of the failure on the Wessex is traced to the thick grease used to lubricate the cogs on the tail rotor drive. If not properly cleaned, the grease can build up and harden and prevent the rotor cogs from meshing properly. 
Karpman uses the simulator to recreate the flight conditions of the Wessex on that fateful day. He adjusts for speed and altitude, and then cuts the tail rotor, sending the craft into a spin. Had that pilot had sufficient altitude to regain his airspeed, the outcome would have been different. Without sufficient altitude, the Wessex pilot is trapped in a no-win situation. Saving the helicopter is impossible. I think if a pilot loses a tail rotor control in a critical situation and can save anybody, well, then we probably owe him some gratitude because it's a terrible situation to happen. In this case, the lives of three crew members and an air cadet are spared. Every one of them feels fortunate to have survived. Every day I always think, why me? How come I was the only one that survived? How come my friends died? After the disaster on Lake Padarn, the Westland Wessex was phased out by the Royal Air Force and British government services. It has been replaced by newer models, ones that don't use the heavy lubricating grease. Sarah Coker's flying days are behind her now. The next generation of British air cadets who take to the skies do so with a greater respect for the mechanics that give them flight.